Hello, and welcome to Good Rebottle with me, your BattleBots expert, Charlie, and... Wait, hold up. Something's not right here. Where's Harry? Oh. Oh. Uh, okay then. Well, it looks like I'm gonna be riding solo on this one. But before we get into the content of this episode, which is our long overdue BattleBots Episode 1 review couple things first off sorry for the lack of content for about the last month or so both of us have been really busy with college finishing that up harry's a few days away from finishing up his degree i just got my undergrad about a couple weeks ago and we've been also working on some new projects that will be coming soon but we've got battlebots episode reviews and talking with the teams returning so stay tuned for that that's gonna be fun but let's get right into it episode one of battlebots so the episode starts off with Kenny and Chris coming back, and they look so happy to be there. And that's that's honestly something that I really loved and enjoyed about that, is the fact that both them and Farouk just seemed so happy to be back there. You know, it seemed like they genuinely loved doing this, and they're so glad it's back on the air. Let's talk about the new fight card format. Basically, what happens is that you get these matchups every week. It's not in a bracket yet, it's gonna be later on, but you're gonna have bots match up against each other, and then also gonna lead like, into a main event fight where two heavy hitters are going to go head to head it kind of makes it a little bit more of an even level playing field it, you're not going to really see a lot of escape velocities versus tombstones this season i think it's gonna be a really good choice though because this leads to robots that are at different tiers get to go against evenly matched machines so let's get right into the first fight blacksmith versus bite force and what a fight this was to open with for the last two seasons Let's talk about those fights. We had for season one, Ice Wave versus Razor back in for season two, the melee with Creepy Crawly's Ultraviolet and Son of Wayachi. Both those fights were solid, but they both also had a common issue in that they were just a clear sweep by one fought by one bot, completely one-sided. This fight, however, was much more even. Bite Force coming back, looking relatively the same. The only two big changes this season is that they now have a black guard over the motor to prevent any, well, chomp incidents. And also, they are joined by a burly man who I'm pretty sure could break me in half. Blacksmith, on the other hand, has taken a few more changes. The geometry is a bit different. They seem to have a much stouter wedge at the front. They have guarding around the weapon motor. But it still has that massive flaming hammer that we've come to know from them. Getting right into it. It's a very even contest. Blacksmith able to deliver some big blows early on, but Bite Force delivering some massive hits. It's a very good back and forth, with Blacksmith seeming to have more of the damage, and in fact, at a point, it looks like the, it looks like the flames of the hammer stopped working, but Bite Force weapon also stopped working too for a while. In the end, though, in about the last 45 seconds, I believe, Bite Force's weapon gets back up and ends up shooting Blacksmith up into the screws in the final seconds. And that shot right there was enough to open up the season with a victory for Paul and Bite Force, a great start to the season one champs. And thusly, after a commercial break, we get on to our second fight, which is of three brand new machines, Mecha Rampage, Duck, and Free Shipping. So let's talk about Mecha Rampage first. This is a Christian Carlberg machine here. And of course, Christian, anybody who knows BattleBots will know, he's been there since the beginning, known for machines such as Overkill, Minion, Toe Crusher, he was on the ABC season with the Overdrive variety of robots, which unfortunately didn't do as well, at least compared to Christian's legacy back in the Comedy Central days, but still were solid machines. This season, he's gone insane, basically. I love this robot, though. It's, it's this long, wide robot with this sort of spinning shell with two blades sticking out of it. It's a very interesting spinner, something that I don't think I've ever really seen before. And it's got this amazing reach. I mean, this thing, it basically, the way I think I've seen people describe it is if Huggy Bear was modernized and also could kill you. And now let's talk about the next two robots because they kind of share a similar lineage. Both these robots, Duck and Free Shipping, are actually repurposed versions of RoboGames machines. For Duck, it is Whoops, and for Free Shipping, it's Original Sin. So let's start with Duck. Duck is made by Hal Rucker, the guy who came last season with the Ringmaster, a beautiful machine, pure CNC beauty there. And Duck, although on the outside it's not as, it doesn't look as intricate, 
on the inside, it is still beautiful. This thing is built out of a single piece of, I believe, aluminum or titanium. Sorry, I'm not good with metals, I apologize. But it's still a very great looking machine. And, and Wolves is a very stout machine. It was able to brunt shots from last rights very easily, even ended up KOing it. And so Hal decided to take that, make it sort of a lifter, and theme it after a duck. I love it. I love this thing so much. And, and from what I heard on both subreddit from builders, it was a fan favorite, and I can see why. It's called Duck. You have a names like Tombstone and Mecha Rampage and Shark Oprian, and then you have Duck. Free shipping, another robot based on a RoboGuys machine. This is based off the most winning heavyweight robot of all time, Original Sin, driven by Gary Jin. And when I was hearing about this, they said it was Original Sin with a forklift. I figured, okay, maybe it has like lifting forks or something like that. No, they meant a, they meant a little forklift. A literal forklift. And like Duck, I love this thing too. Gary Jin could have came in this event with a machine that had basically just the most boilerplate definition of an active weapon, and he would have made a deep run. He didn't have to do all this, but he did. And I love it so much. This thing also has probably the most potent flamethrower I've ever seen on a robot. This thing makes raging Scotsman weep. It is potent. It's a, there's a massive just shot of flame out of this thing. It was so cool to see. And so now we get onto the rumble itself. This is probably my favorite five of the whole episode because it was a very good back and forth. Mecha Rampage delivering some good shots, taking out a wheel of duck and free shipping, just shooting flame everywhere. Duck kind of keeping conservative here, but it did pay off in the end. So Mecha Rampage ended up smoking at a point, was able to keep going relatively efficiently until Free Shipping got its flame going and just spurred it right into Mecha Rampage, setting it on fire and ended up burning it. But this was not before Mecha Rampage ended up tearing off one of the forklifts off Free Shipping. Duck, meanwhile, was keeping its own here, still managing to keep within the fight, and with Mecha Rampage now KO'd, it ended, tip, it ended up tipping over free shipping. And thus, in the final few seconds, Duck ended up with two KOs. Now, it did go to the judges, but they ended up giving it to Duck. So Hal Rucker, now with a win under his belt with Duck, and I'm pretty sure a lot of new fans, that thing was, was a phenomenal machine. So before we get to our next fight, a traditional two-bot fight. This features Sub-Zero and Huge. Oh wait, sorry, I meant <clears throat> HUGE! Anyhow, so both these robots hail from the Northeast United States, Sub-Zero from Pennsylvania, Huge from Connecticut. Sub-Zero we saw last season ended up going against Ice Wave, unfortunately did lose that fight, and they're, but they're now back. The, ro the robot looks relatively similar, the only difference I see is that they now have these sort of eyes gives out a little bit of extra character, and huge is, well, huge. For anyone that's been following the live combats, especially for stuff like Motorama events, you will know about huge. It started off as a featherweight robot before amping up into this massive version of it. It is basically if you took Gabriel from Robot Wars, took away the pickaxe, and stuck a bar spinner in it. And I love huge. I love this thing so much. The team are great characters, they are loving it, and I love just seeing this thing perform. So this fight, unfortunately like the first two, was not as even. Sub-Zero did get a few good moves in there, but for the most part, Huge just ended up just taking chunk out of chunk out of chunk of Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero added some sort of metal bits onto both the front and the back to keep Huge at bay. Unfortunately it didn't work out as much. Sub-Zero, bless him. They kept going till the very end, but this fight was definitely huge. And so we move on to our next fight, Bombshell versus Lockjaw. Now before we get into this fight, I want to mention that for this episode, I was actually able to watch this at the Maker Station in Marietta with members of the Chaos Court, including Julie, Randy, and also Mike, the team captain. And they were all fantastic people. Everybody there was so nice, so gracious. I gotta give some massive thanks to them for just making this great viewing party for this first episode of BattleBots. I'll definitely be there for more. Bombshell, a robot that we talk quite a lot on Good Robotal. We'll actually leave links to both the videos we've had with Mike Jeffries in the description here. So not much has really changed on this thing since we talked about it during the unveiling video. The only major difference is that there's some graphic work on it with some great 
sort of a teeth design on the front. It looks amazing. And now for a robot that we actually haven't talked about on the show, Lockjaw. Don Hudson, again, like Christian Carlberg, is a legend. Multiple giant nuts across the entire Comedy Central season. Don Hudson is one of the most well-known and respected builders out of the entire BattleBots roster. And for good reason. He makes these amazingly unique but also effective robots. Unfortunately, like Christian Carlberg, he, hasn't has, he didn't have as much luck in the ABC season despite some very excellent looking machines, especially the season two lockjaw, which I absolutely loved. This time around, he seems to have gone for something that, well, I haven't seen him try, at least on TV, and that is a vertical spinner. But this is a very good integration of the vertical spinner and the lockjaw design. It still has some articulating forks on the front, very characteristic of Donald Hudson. It also has the wheels at an angle, now packing a nasty vertical spinner. It makes for a very good looking machine. I'm quite excited to see how this looked. And so, getting into the fight, this fight kind of hurt. Because Bombshell, from unfortunately, was not working at full capacity. Mike said immediately after the fight that they had gone through three weapon motors before the fight even started, and it was also running at about 50% capacity. That's why you notice it wasn't spinning as fast, and it was ended up getting stuck on its front quite often. So, yes, indeed, Lockjaw ended up getting underneath Bombshell, flipping them over. So, yeah, unfortunately, Bombshell ended up getting KO'd very early on. It was definitely heartbreaking, especially considering I was sitting right next to several of the people who helped build this robot. But you know what? Fair play to Donald Hudson. I gotta give him congratulations for coming back swinging with this. It's a very potent looking lockjaw. Best of luck to him the rest of this season, and also best of luck to the guys at Bombshell. I have heard of some of the fights that they have moving forward, and they sound exciting. But anyways, moving on, we're getting into the last fight before the main event. It is a Rumble that was exclusively on Science Channel. So if you watched it on Discovery on that Friday night, you didn't see this fight. It would be on that following Wednesday on Science Channel that this was aired. It was between three brand new robots, Kraken, Shark Oprian, and Deviled Egg. So let's start off with Deviled Egg. Deviled Egg is a drum spinner. It is a drum spinner that debuted in Robo Games back in 2017. And although it at least structurally shares a resemblance to machines like Minotaur, what really sets this robot apart is the paint scheme. It has this very intricate sort of steampunk style, very artistic paint scheme on it that looks amazing, honestly. The work into this is phenomenal. Probably the best paint work I've seen this whole season, and that's saying something. Next we have Shark Oprium, which for anyone who may remember the Robotica days or the Robot World Extreme Warriors days, may recognize the lineage of Ed Robinson and his robots mainly with machines like Fantastic and Snookums. And this is the successor to that. This is the big boy version of that. It is a shark-themed robot using a lot of recycled parts, including both fins, a pivoting tail, and then a nasty vertical disc at the front. Again, a very gorgeous machine. This thing's been a massive hit on social media, and for good reason. It is a beautiful, beautiful robot. i probably compare it to Season 2's Death Roll, in that it's this very amazing vertical spinner based off of an aquatic animal. And like Death Roll, it is gorgeous. And speaking of gorgeous, Kraken. Kraken is a brand new robot from a team out of Tysville, Florida, CE Robotics. And this thing is a very, sort of a very unique robot. What it is, it's designed like an anglerfish, including a clamper at the front, which is supposed to come down and clamp on other robots. Basically, the intention is that it'll come down, pierce the robot, and maybe even lift them up. It's kind of an interesting take on a crusher design that you'll see maybe obviously more traditionally used on some machines later on this season, like Petunia. And so with that, we have three great machines going head to head here. So how to turn out? Well, unfortunately for Kraken and Deviled Egg, they both seem to be having teething issues. Deviled Egg didn't quite seem to get their drum up to speed as much as they want to, and Kraken, unfortunately, at least some debris caught in its drive system and ended up jamming it, making it very hard to drive, and then also, I believe there's some issue with the bolts that were used for the teeth. They ended up actually falling out. I'll leave a link in the video in the description here where the team captain of Kraken, Matt Spurk, actually explains in depth of what went wrong in that fight. But basically, Kraken and Deviled Egg ended up falling much short of what they're capable of. Deviled Egg got shot by Shark Oprian, a massive hit on the body, ended up KOing it, Kraken after taking some abuse from Shark Operating as well, ended up eventually dying as well. And so with that, 
Ed Robinson, after a long hiatus, takes a win with Shark Oprian. Massive congratulations to him. That was a very, very hard-fought fight, and I'm glad to see his return in style. And so, we get to this. The main event. Tombstone versus Minotaur. The two robots that everybody wanted in Season 2 to go clash against each other head-to-head, -head, they decided, no. We're not going to make y'all wait an entire season for this fight to happen. We're giving it to you in Episode 1. That's how you kick off a season right there. So, both these robots, relatively the same as last season, at least as far as externally. They, of course, had some internal upgrades and everything. And with their history of Last Rites versus Toro Maximus and Robo Games, it's relatively even. So this one is here to really break the tie and settle the score. So this fight begins with both robots getting a little bit tentative against each other until Tombstone and Minotaur end up making a massive hit. Minotaur goes flying and Tombstone carves a chunk out of the arena. Something I have never seen before on BattleBots, where just an entire chunk out of the arena is just carved upward. And this happens about three or four more times in this fight, making some massive hits that shoot the bots flying across the arena, including a moment where it ended up with a legendary face from Chris Rose that honestly, I'm gonna use across all my social media. It was phenomenal, but not as phenomenal as this fight here though. This fight was an absolute slugger fast. It ended up with Minotaur, unfortunately, having its drum you know, end up cutting out due to all the abuse it got from Tombstone. Tombstone just kept delivering hit after hit, but it was also starting to fray itself. Tombstone and Minotaur, after this fight, were much worse for wear, but this fight ended it in a way that has never happened before. Minotaur gets high-sided on a piece of the torn arena from Tombstone and gets KO'd. Yes, a torn piece of the arena ended up KOing a robot. Ray Billings has decided that the arena hazards were not enough to end a robot, so he decided to create his own. And with that, the champion has begun his journey back to the throne in very fitting fashion with a monster fight against Minotaur. And so with that, episode one of BattleBots Discovery concluded. And what an episode it was. We're going to have 20 weeks of this. 20 weeks of amazing fights like this. And honestly, I'm not one to really give predictions, but I'm going to say this right now. Is that if the episodes are like this, where they're this consistently good across 20 weeks... I think this may be the best season of any robot combat show ever. I'm saying it right here, right now, and I hope I'm proven right because this is shaping up to be a phenomenal, phenomenal season. But until then, I'd like y'all to give us a like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and follow us on Facebook. All that's where social media gubbins. All those will be down in the description. But until then, next time, I've been Charlie, and you've been watching Good Robotle. Thank you, and goodbye.